You know, my conversion happened at Lucas Avenue, and uh, when they were singing that early melody, just like, I just went back to Lucas. I was almost afraid, Pastor, that I was going to end up going to the parking lot and have three cars behind me and have to wait to, you know, leave. If you're from Lucas, you understand that. Um, I want to give honor to our pastor, and I want to give honor to our associate pastor and all the minister team. I'm so thankful that they give me another opportunity to come before you with a thought. And if you have your Bible, I'll be reading from Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. And the Bible says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these things of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house. And it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. For a few moments, I want to talk about the parable of the wise and foolish builder. You can be seated. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is the tail end of the famous Sermon on the Mount that Jesus preached. And it starts in, of course, uh, chapter 5 of Matthew goes through. And, you know, mo many of us know the Sermon on the Mount. You know, it starts off with the famous Beatitudes. You know, blessed are the peacemakers and blessed are the poor in spirit. Then it goes into where Jesus begins to deal with things, you know, that seems contrary to the law. But Jesus was going deeper beyond that. He said he didn't come to uh, destroy the law, but to come to fulfill. And he began to deal with things with the heart. So to actually look upon a woman, and have lust in her heart, Jesus said was as to commit adultery. And he said to have hatred towards your brother is to have the spirit of murder in your heart. So. You know, sometimes uh, you'll hear people talk about, like, the Bible, and they say, well, you know, I want that God of the New Testament, because that God of the Old Testament was so hard and rough. But actually, the fulfillment of the whole law happened in the New Testament, and it actually is a little bit harder in the New Testament because it's a heart issue. So in the Old Testament, as long as you didn't get caught, you're okay. But the root of the problem was the heart. So Jesus said, you know what, let's just go and attack the root. If you're thinking it, that is as you are. But anyway, we go back to this parable of the foolish builder and the wise builder. And I'm going to start with the foolish builder. And, you know, when you, you know, um, lately as I've been studying the word, I've been blessed to have, well, actually I got married and I got a huge family, like huge, large. And as they get married, it gets larger and larger. But uh, my brother-in-law, he, uh, we, we have these, what we like to call, I guess you could say, uh, pizza Bible studies, you know, he Every so often, he would come over to the house, and he'd have a piece of pizza, or he'll come over, and I'll be like, hey, bro, let me get you a better piece of pizza, you know, and so we'll sit there, and we just talk about the Bible, and, you know, my, uh, my uh, brother-in-law, Jace, he's a phenomenal, you know, study of the word, a phenomenal uh, teacher, and one of the things that I, like, uh, admire about him is he likes to dig deep into the word and find meanings to the word, right? So when I was studying this, I was like, let me do the same thing. And so it says the foolish man built his house upon the sand. So I was like, I'm going to get really th theological and dig deep and find out what the meaning of sand is. And guess what? It means sand. <laughs> so sorry, Jason, if I failed you, but sand, right? So when I looked up the definition of sand, all sand literally is is bits and pieces of rock that have been washed down and collected at the ocean front. And so an application could be that. Now, Jesus was talking about, he's concluding his Sermon on the Mount. And as he began to preach and talk about all the different things and principles, he said, if you listen to this word and you don't do it, you, you, you've received the word, but you, you haven't received it, you're like a wise or you're like a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. So the application might be that the foolish man takes bits and pieces of the word to try to build his house instead of building it upon the full measure of the word. Let me tell you something. Every little dot, every little cross of the T of the word of God is important. We can't pick and choose the word. We must found our house upon the whole word. If you go and 
look back at Luke's account of the same scripture, I wanted to dig a little deeper. Luke 6 and 48 says, and uh, they're talking about the wise men here, but he says, he is likened, he's like a man which built a house, digged, diggeth deep, and lay the foundation upon a rock. And so if you look at that, it's not just that the foolish man built his house upon bits and pieces of the word, but the foolish man didn't even seek for a foundation. The foolish man came to the house of God. He heard the word of God. He, he listened and he saw and he experienced the presence of God. But when he went home, he didn't dig deep. He didn't get to the rock. He didn't graft the word. And the Bible says that when the rains came and when the winds blew and when the floods came up, not only did the house fall, but but the Bible says, great there was of it. The fall was mighty. But let's look unto the wise man. The wise man heard the word. And he didn't just feel that you know, emotion we feel in the house of God. and That joy and that thunder of the voice that you might be hearing right now. You know, you, you, they, he didn't just take that experience and said, man, this is such a wonderful feeling that I feel in this house. But he decided that when I go home on Monday and when I'm at the house on Tuesday and when I'm at the job on Thursday, I'm going to dig up this word. I'm going to engraft this word. I'm going to allow this word to permeate me. And so when the rains were to come and when the winds blow, can I tell you something? Sometimes we get full full-mindedly to, th to think that because we're Christians, nothing bad is going to happen to us. Nowhere in the word does it tell us that we won't go through trials. But I tell you one thing, the one thing that the word does tell us is that despite the trial, despite the rain, despite all that we might go through, we shall be founded upon a rock and we shall stand. Church, can I tell you something? Don't be foolhearted. Don't allow your emotions to captivate you in this house right now and don't take it home. But the very presence you feel in this place, you can feel at home. The very presence and joy we just felt in the altar of worship you can feel on your job you can feel in the midst of an evil world trying to separate us trying to have us hate but you can be a child of God and rebuke that fear and you can push away that confusion and allow the spirit of God to stir in you and not only will you be lifted up but you'll begin to lift up others so church let's not build our house upon bits and pieces of the words but let us seek a deeper foundation and found our house upon the rock of God.